the bench. Puddled iron ends with chestnut back and seat, anchored fast into Portland concrete, bequeathed to the indigent poor by philanthropic Victorian dignitaries, benefaction guaranteeing benediction and safe passage through the twelve gates, helping moreover in some minute way to further deter the rebel from storming the citadel. But this old bench, indifferent to such chicanery, continues to provide its largesse in selfless shifts. Early doors come the sheltered people, evicted summarily after meagre servings of porridge and builders' tea, then dispersing wearily in twos as shops and pubs heat up, making way for the mothers with the little ones, returning from school runs to watch the ducks and to prattle, recalling the freedom that they themselves had in the innocent years. Lunchtime brings the office and factory workers, released to refuel for the next session of compliance, a few edging towards emancipation, most in a state of hopeless docility. Then later, the others, mainly the old, less chatter here, more reflection, some regret. Six types of apology on offer, none of any consequence. The deeds and the damage long since done. Then as the sun sets, the young, boisterous and ebullient, still learning to deal with the mysteries of existence, the never forgotten years when fates are determined. Pubertal exuberance renders self-control rudderless, and for the besotted all is a sweet daze. Darkness falls and the old bench releases its charges, ready for another day, asking for nothing but the occasional re of varnish and green paint.